Nathaniel Bassi versus Chrissy Ortain. It's on the bill. Gospel musician, gospel singer, Nathaniel Bassi versus Ghana's gospel musician, Kwesi Oting. The, the biggest three songs that have left African shores to hit the ends of the world um, are all in English. Peace, when sorrow died, mm -hmm. Jehovah sees. Way back in mm -hmm. South Africa, Lionel Peterson yeah. went global. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our God. Mm. Second. And the one doing the most right now is Waymaker, Miracle Worker. All are in English. Hello, my people. Hello, my people. I salute you all. 24 Guns salute. Welcome to TJ Studios. I am your commander-in-chief of this podcast. My name is TJ, and I salute you all. Well, what's popping today? Okay, before we do that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Subscribe, hit the notification button to get notified whenever I post any new video. Okay, so what's on the bill today? Nathaniel Bassi versus Kwesi Oteng is on the bill. Gospel musician, gospel singer, Nathaniel Bassi versus Ghana's gospel musician, Kwesi Oteng. All right, so those of you watching me from Nigeria, you probably might not know who Kwesi Oting is. Kwesi Oting is one gospel musician from Ghana I love and I admire so much. The truth of the matter is that I've basically had a one-on-one -on -one convo interview with him. And trust me, Kwesi Oting is that artist that in, within some time or years back took Ghanaian music onto his chest and built it right Ghanaian music all right gospel music for that matter was already in existence but Kwesi Otin brought a new dimension of urban and contemporary style of music all right that changed the face of Ghanaian music or the Ghanaian gospel music all right he sacrificed himself and fought a lot of battles for the Ghanaian gospel music industry that reflected in the change of how much they they pay or they are paid how much they charge and how much they are branded all right he brought a new or a different style of music now Nathaniel Bassi's admonishment of us doing some of our songs in English language to grab a global reach or to get a global reach all right, brought a lot of, you know, feuds, all right, amongst, or brought a lot of controversies among the Ghanaian populace and all around the media as well, okay? We were yet to hear from Kwesi Oteng, okay? But Kwesi Oteng expounded on the issue not long ago on Ghana's TV network, TV3. So on the editorial today, I would just want us to watch Kwesi Oteng, sorry, Kwesi Oteng's opinion on the whole Nathaniel Bassi haha, and then when we come back, I'll give you a profile of who Kwesi Oteng really is, all right? He is a gem, and I really love him so much. So let's go and enjoy what he said. Okay. I remember that one of the big songs that really outdoored you yes. in the industry was in English. Yes, and I think you had started a whole reform in the gospel yes. um, fraternity because yeah. then you're bringing a more vibrant yeah. side of yourself. Yes. And that worked. Yeah. So you agreed with Nathaniel Bassi. You, you posted a tweet saying very that. Very much. Very much so? Yes. Why? English is... Um a huge it's a big language okay let me not even go there let me let me leave that conversation all right like lithium like recently the there's whole conversation about lithium mm -hmm. all right among our capacity as Ghanaians to write very nice um, local music is also a wide generation of treasure mm -hmm. that we have in this country who have been schooled and well um, uh, developed in writing songs in English or with um, the capacity of um, doing things in English. Mm -hmm. It's not everybody who is a Yesu no Ribo or uh, Amajin Kwa, do you understand? Um, there, there's a capacity because I don't want to, I don't want to target us. So what should we do? Nathaniel did not say we should change our language. Mm -hmm. He said write more songs in English. Mm -hmm. He 
Nathaniel um, does to Bechuku, mm -hmm. Imela, mm -hmm. okay? So this is not a person who is trying to get us to stop what we're doing. But when we get a conversation about international um, standing, mm. um, why not uh, adapt or like, why not um, have um, English as part of the conversation? Mm. Do you understand? That whole conversation as um, uh, Yusu Hindu and all these. Yeah. Uh, it happens once in a blue moon. Does it really? Because all right. Because, because if um, it takes time to do that, I was thinking about it. I'm like, ah, so it means that Daughters of Glory Jesus, their time has not come. Amachi Dede's time has not come. Um, uh, you know, because some of these people are relevant to Ghanaian community globally, mm -hmm. not relevant beyond our culture. All right. Mm -hmm. And a mo part of our culture is also English. English is part of our culture now, whether we like it or not. It's why we are sitting here. We're not speaking tree. And but there so, are platforms that... There um, are platforms, okay. Good, tree, good, gun, good. And all yeah, that. so all I'm saying is that as much as we have a capacity of ministers that write tree songs, mm -hmm. here in Ghana is a capacity of well-intentioned ministers, okay, who write songs very, very, very well in English. That must also have the grounds of promotion and support, basically. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm because saying. Because then if I look at the, the group, it's a trio in South Africa that won the best global music performance at the Grammys. Awesome. They won with a song called Bayethe. Awesome. Most of us hadn't heard it. Awesome. But even when we went to listen to it, like everybody that. was wondering, okay, I like that. what's going on? Good. How did this song win? But that was in their local Me, I don't want to wonder, okay? Uh-huh. I don't want to wonder. Uh-huh. Um... The, the biggest three songs that have left African shores to hit the ends of the world um, are all in English. Peace, when sorrow died, mm -hmm. Jehovah sees. Way back in mm -hmm. South Africa, Lionel Peterson yeah. went global. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our God. Mm -hmm. Second, and the one doing the most right now is Waymaker, Miracle Worker. All are in English. Bayete or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's not as close or big. Winning Grammys doesn't mean, do you understand? Because when we go to church in Africa here, mm. we're singing Waymaker. Yeah, but we sing the local songs too. We don't we're sing even Bayete. singing South African songs that I'm coming. had to be translated. Awesome, which is beautiful, beautiful. Uh -huh. But I'm saying, and every person listening to me who is around gospel music will attest to beautiful. Uh -huh. But I'm saying... And every music. All right. So that is the opinion of Kwesi Ote, and I perfectly agree with what he said. This has actually been my opinion. If you watch the recent post I made, podcast I made on the Nathaniel Bassi issue when Ghanaians, or some Ghanaians were bashing him all over in Ghana, all right, some of them were bashing him. I came to the defense of Tantania Obasi. Now, why am I saying or why am I bringing Kwesi Otin into the picture? Kwesi Otin is that Ghanaian gospel artist that has a lot of music genus or gospel songs in the English language. Trust me. Before, all right, Kwesi Otin came into being in the gospel industry, it was just a normal space with our videos, with the way we dress, but... Kwesi brought that urban, that different style, and most of Kwesi Oten's song were in English language. All right? But let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's watch this. So this is basically Kwesi Oten, a contemporary Ghanaian-based gospel musician. All right, his style and his song of music dominated Ghana some time ago. And it was the toast of the country because we had never seen that kind of musician, although we had the likes of Danny Nete and a few Ghanaian gospel artists in the past who were legends doing English language. It was not drummed. It was not, you know, out there. 
as much as Kwesi Ortain's genre that sprang up, basically the contemporary style of music. And if you check the way he dresses, all right, the video is rolling on your screens. For copyright sake, I cannot give you a full gist of Kwesi Ortain's video, but you can go and type Kwesi Ortain. Type Kwesi Ortain. His name is on the screen. Kwesi Ortain. And trust me, you'll be marveled as to why we've left Kwesi Ortain ajar and it's no more seen within the Ghanaian music space. Some are even owing it to the fact that he joined a political party in Ghana and as such lost his re relevance. That is not true. If that had been the case, a lot of artists would have been out of the, you know, box right now, out of the space of the gospel music. Right now, you get it. Kwesi Ortain's style of music should have been something we like I've been saying, we would have been deliberate about it and then carving a niche around his style of music. From it be God where they bless me all to a lot of bangers, which I cannot share, but I can admonish you to go to the channel of Kwesi Oting just to go and have a look of some of his work. Trust me, trust me, Kwesi Oting, be serious bars. All right, let me switch to Nathaniel Obasi. Papa, you are a legend. I call you Papa because I love your songs. Papa, I see you as a legend. I see your songs as a prophetic arena of preaching to all and sundry within, within the global space, not only Nigerians. You've seen a lot for yourself. You've graced a lot of occasions and stages. And you know how, you know, penetrating or having an English song within the gospel context, will take you far. All right? Yes, we can do songs in our local dialect. It is okay. All right? It will go places. But the songs that will go farthest and furthest to a length of carving us and taking us to the global, you know, market will be in English songs. All right? Will be in the English language. Let me put this in context. Sinatch's Waymaker. Yesterday I was watching SBN International, which is an internationally recognized or an international gospel channel where a lot of international, internationally recognized preachers are on. They preach day in, day out. And I saw them, a lot of the American churches singing Waymaker. Yes, some churches might do or they may do songs in your, so in your dialect. All right. But it would not be as that of that English language. And I've said this time and number that doing a song in the English language, you know, gives you an X factor. It gives you that extra niche that propels you to the global market and propels and prepares you for global reach. So if we had looked at it thoroughly from a different point and thought of it within a wider context, we would have come to an agreement that he meant no harm. This is the last time I'll be doing a podcast on the Nathaniel Bassi issue. I am touching on it again because I was waiting for the feedback of certain players or certain industry gurus who are like-minded and are positive-minded. And I thank God Kwesi Oten has jumped into the defense of Nathaniel Bassi. Okay? Songs, Sa Kodier, let me put it in this context. Sa Kodier song or Sa Kodier style of rap is basically most of them are in the local dialect. She has ending international recognition both by winning international awards such as the BET, right? But imagine if Sir Akwadie could have communicated in English a lot more. He could have gained extra recognition, all right? So basically, I said this. Doing a song in your local dialect, it is no, no way a demerit or a disadvantage to you, all right? But someone having a song in the English language has an extra niche over you, okay? So let's do this, all right? This is a podcast I'm not going to linger on. I'm just bringing this to you because I was, I said, I was waiting for some people to jump in and then share their thoughts. And I'm glad and happy to see a like-minded person like we see your thing, all right, doing this in relation to the whole issue, all right? Now, like I've been saying, I am actually admonishing and I'm also actually begging of Nigerians to go and just type Kwesi Otin on YouTube, all right? Share your thoughts with me after doing so. And ask yourself one question. Why 
would Ghanaians leave this talent ajar? Why would Ghanaians let go of this talent? We are not hearing a lot more enough from Kwesi Oting these days because I don't know what is going on. He will be the best person, all right, to explain for us to hear. But I would love, I don't know if you agree with me, I would love to have Kwesi Oting on this show, either via phone or via video call. I would love to have Kwesi Oting on this show, you know, for us to expand all right, dilate and discuss a lot more about him as a gospel singer and his talent. Because I love Kwesi Yotin. Kwesi Yotin is a gem. Kwesi Yotin is somebody we shouldn't let go. All right, that easily. All right, this comes back to our industry. And I'm going to make a clarion call to all and sundry within Ghana, and especially to our industry players. All right, the pulling down syndrome. The if you are not within my team, I won't support you syndrome. The group group syndrome. Forming groups to push an agenda for ourselves. Selfishness. That is preaching or that brings about selfishness within us. All right. Okay. Can we all have, have this, this plan? Can we all have this mindset? Can we all agree to disagree? Can we all disagree to agree on a project? Within the next three to four, five years, have a project. All right? It is same within the secular space, but it's worse within the gospel space. All right? Some of us are touting Nathaniel Bassi for what he said. All right? The last time I said something on my channel, Nathaniel Bassi's admonishment is a prophecy. It was not born out of guilt. It was not out, born out of jealousy, jealousy. It was an admonishment. And then an admonishment out of prophecy. Let me put it in that context. Which is basically meant for certain people. I said something. When men of God are on stage. When prophets of, of God are in a church or in an auditorium. And then they prophesy generally to people or to the congregation or congregants. It is basically meant for a group of people. Or for some group of people. So if you were here, if you were there at, um, um, how do we call him, Nathaniel Bassi's event, and you feel what he said speaks to you, if God has given you the grace to write a lot more songs in the English language, this is your time. Take hold of the prophecy. Receive it and carve a niche of positivity around it. Start writing positive messages of songs that are delivered to you by the Holy Spirit all right, start writing them and start throwing it out there in the media space. And trust me, the global reach Nathaniel Bassi said will be your portion. All right, let me repeat it again. The global reach Nathaniel Bassi said will be your portion. Don't take what he said on the negative side. And like I've been saying, I am grateful to Kwesi Oteng for adding his voice to this wonderful, you know, issue. And then this issue, let me put it in that, that way, okay? It was in no way to harm us. It was in no way to throw jabs as, at us. It was in no way born out of jealousy and out of guilt, all right? If you follow Nathaniel Obasi, all right, word for word, lyrics by lyrics, and then song for song, you know or you clearly know why he said that on the stage. The man carries an unction. The man carries an anointing, all right? And I can't wait to have a one-on-one -on -one session with him. That will be one of my dream come true, all right, on this podcast, okay? So like I said, I'm not going to linger on on this podcast, all right? It was basically Kwesi Oteng's word versus Nathaniel Obasi's word. That is why I named this podcast, Kwesi Otain, sorry, versus Nathaniel Bassi. 24 guys salute to Kwesi Otain, all right, for bringing a change, for being a tool, or for availing himself to bring a change within the Ghana music space when we needed one, and for unearthing contemporary style of music within the Ghana music space, and for singing and, you know, a lot of his songs in the English language and then some too in the tree language, all right? But a lot of Kwesi Oteng songs are in the English language. And it's a no fluke 
that he came and conquered within that period with that different style and that different way of gospel music. 24 guns salute to you, Kwesi. It is time to sign out. But before I do that, let me give shout outs to Nathaniel Basi for also admonishing us to do the needful. All right. The name is TJ. The show is TJ Studios. The show is known as Boys Casa. All right. On the editorial session, I dissect and dilate issues pertaining to the African music industry. All right. Let me put it in context. I discuss, dissect and dilate issues with reference to the African music space and the music industry. All right. It is time to sign out. But like I've been doing, subscribe to the channel. Let's build a community. Share your thoughts. I need them. It guides me. All right. It propels me to do more whenever I'm putting a con a, a, con a podcast for, sorry, together. All right. It is time to sign out. Don't forget my other social media handles, Instagram, TJ Studios, TikTok, TJ Studios, Facebook, TJ Studios, wherever is TJ Studios. Just type T-E-J-A-Y, T-E-E-J-A-Y Studios. All right, let's build a community. It is time to sign out like I've been doing all the time. Peace out.